Dorian continues to strengthen. It's a Category 5 hurricane. It reached that status at 8 a.m. this morning, and by late morning, winds were up to 180 miles an hour. It is tracking very slowly towards the west, less than 10 miles an hour, and it will cross parts of the Bahamas today with devastating consequences. In addition to those very strong winds, rainfall amounts of 20 to 30 inches will be possible, and a horrific storm surge. That's the wall of water that gets pushed ahead of a hurricane as it makes landfall, and that's on top of the normal sea level. And when you talk about a hurricane this large, one of the strongest on records in the Atlantic, we're talking about a storm surge over 20 feet. That's on top of the normal tides, and you throw waves on top of that. So a 20, possibly 23, 24 foot storm surge in the Bahamas. It'll track towards the west, and it's still expected to take a bit of a right turn before it hits the Florida coast. But notice the cone of uncertainty. The eastern coast of Florida is still not out of the realm of possibility for a landfall, but the latest models from the Hurricane Center keep it just east of the coast, but there's still some hurricane watches up for parts of the Florida coast due to the close proximity. Although they won't see the strongest winds there, coastal areas of Florida will still have some pretty strong winds from time to time as the storm passes by. It should weaken a little bit down to about a Category 1 hurricane later this week. And the current track keeps it just offshore, but some of the computer models are pushing it a little bit farther east. You notice this shows the axis of where the strongest winds will be. And once it gets past the Bahamas, most of the strong winds will stay out over the ocean over the next couple days. That is the track if that doesn't change. But here's the spaghetti plot. We still have a few models that do want to bring it inland towards parts of Florida or the southeast, but the lion's share of them are pushing it a little bit farther eastward. We want this far east track because that would be the least impact to the mid-Atlantic and southeastern coast, but it's going to be close. The storm may be by the Outer Banks by about Thursday, and if it comes that close to the mid-Atlantic, we could get some rain and some gusty winds here in the metro, more so down in Virginia Beach, but if it takes a more easterly track, we're not going to have much impact at all. We will see those effects, if any, Thursday and Friday in the form of some clouds and the threat for some rain and wind. If the storm is pretty close to the Outer Banks, may have some gusts in the metro over 25, 30 miles an hour, over 40 the coast. But if it goes a little bit farther away, we'll have lesser effects from that. But in the meantime, it'll be humid this afternoon, mid to upper 80s, near 90 Monday and Tuesday. Carolina, isolated storm in a spot or two. The hottest, most humid day of the week will be Wednesday with a high of 93. Some cooler temperatures late week as Dorian tracks way to our southeast. And then that should be out of here by late Friday and Saturday. So we'll have a sunny start to next weekend.